Good morning and welcome to you all. We come to worship today on the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter, and we are blessed to have us all gathered here together for this time of worship and praise. A few announcements uh, for today. One of the most important is that today we will be honoring our college graduates, and we do have three of them, um, as you will see in your bulletin, um, that we have um, information on their studies and uh, where they will be going next. And we will have a blessing for Brianne, Rebecca, and Caitlin during our worship service. And then everyone is invited down to the fellowship hall after service for uh, a time of um, eating and celebrating together after worship today. So please join us if you can. A few other announcements. Uh, we are still, of course, looking for volunteers for the hiker meals. Um, this past Wednesday, we did see the uptick that we were expecting. So the first couple of weeks were a little bit light. We had, I think, 13 or 14 people, I'm looking around to see, um, this week. And uh, with promises that everyone is saying that there are lots more to come um, that are behind them. So I expect that over the next few weeks, we will see those numbers rise, and we hope that they do. Uh, so please, if you are able, um, see one of us, and we can get you signed up on the list. This coming Thursday, we will uh, have a documentary video series and discussion on um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and I would hope that you would join us for that uh, at 7 o'clock here at in the Education Wing. Um, I have been asked to announce that for next week, Lisa is in need of someone to cover the recording duties for her. So those of you who have been trained um, and who might be here next week, um, we would appreciate if you would see her if you are able to uh, volunteer uh, for, for doing that. Are there any other announcements in the congregation? Cindy? I just wanted to give you guys a, a little bit of an update on my mom. After uh, four weeks in the hospital, she finally, as of about five o'clock Thursday, was uh, moved over to Helen Simpson Rehab. So hopefully uh, she'll make some progress there. And uh, so, But I just want to say thank you uh, for your cards and your phone calls, and some of you have visited, and your prayers most of all. Thank you. Anything else from anyone? Bill in the back. Yeah, I just wanted to, to let everybody know that we're going to honor uh, three spectacular ladies today, but actually there's a fourth. Uh, as you probably were aware, uh, Pastor graduated in 2020 when everything was shut down, so she didn't get the, the privilege of having a graduation ceremony. but. Uh, this past weekend, or past, what, Friday? Friday, uh, they had a graduation, and they had, what, three years? 20, yes. 21, and 22 all graduated together. So she did get a chance to put on a gown and uh, march down the aisle. So we're going yes. to also honor her today. So Thank you. Yes, those of us that had COVID milestones, we're just going to keep celebrating them year after year after year and, and get them in. So thank you for that. So last week, I was entirely remiss in uh, celebrating our milestones in the congregation. And so we wish a belated happy anniversary to Adam and Barb Still and to John and Judy Swartz who celebrated anniversaries last week. And so congratulations to all of you. And this week we celebrate with Sandy Morrison as she celebrates her birthday on Friday. So please lift up a word of prayer um, and blessing for all of them for the year ahead to be one of joy. Judy. Yeah, okay. Um, we're going to get microphone from Alan. 
the fellowship committee meeting Wednesday yes. night at seven. Yes. Sort of as we're cleaning up from yes. spaghetti. How will we do that? We will hope that there will, will either be um, very close to uh, cleaned up or have enough non-fellowship committee members on Wednesday that will keep cleaning up from the hiker meal. And we will um, kind of, those of us who are on the fellowship committee, if we are here on Wednesday, will peel ourselves away. I will get the Zoom logged on so those who are not here will join us via Zoom that is available. Um, and then if we have to stay late, those of us that can will stay late and keep cleaning. So one way or another, we'll get both things done. So yes, there are social ministry meets on Tuesday evening, uh, fellowship committee meets on Wednesday evening. Um, Zoom will be available for both of those if you need it. So those are all of our good and happy announcements. I am sad that we do uh, cross another um, announcement that, that does not fit that category this week. Um, as many of you are likely aware, uh, this week we as a nation passed the horrific milestone of more than one million deaths of our neighbors from COVID. And so today we will once again toll the bell one time for each 100,000 people who have died since the pandemic began. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today, let us commend to God all those who have died from this terrible virus. May they rest in peace, and may God, in his mercy, forgive us all. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able as we begin our worship together. Early on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb, only to find the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Friends, we gather here as Christ's disciples to celebrate the good news. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Beloved church, behold the victory of our God. Jesus, our Lord, has conquered the grave. Sin and death shall reign no more. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let this place resound with joy. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Thank Thanks you. be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. 
We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We sing together our gathering hymn number 361. Wrong key, sorry. <laughs> oh, let's start this again. <laughs>
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. pray. Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. First reading is from Acts 16. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia 
being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neop Neopolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. reading is from Revelation. And in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and its, his servants will worship them, him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night they need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of God, word of life.
Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the gospel of our Lord. The congregation may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If I asked you to describe the book of Revelation in one or two words or even just a phrase, what would come to mind? Is there anyone out there who might offer a word of what it is that you think of when you hear Revelation. We shouldn't be afraid. Cindy says we shouldn't be afraid. Is that what, what you all think? No. no. Joe gives us the, the honest answer for most everybody in the pew. So many of us think of words of fear and terror when we think of Revelation. We're going to make Cindy preach the the word of of hope. (laughs) So my guess is that most of us, though, often share these fears. And very few of us have words that come to mind like hope and promise and peace and life. For many of us, these ideas about Revelation the ones of fear and terror, have been formed through a work of literature from the 1300s by an Italian writer named Dante. In Dante's Inferno, this work of fiction offers to us his view on what it is that the soul's travels happen, how those souls' travels happen, through the realms of hell and purgatory and heaven. The visions of hell, which he describes in the portion called Inferno, have offered to us terrifying descriptions of the suffering of hell for unrepentant sinners who are thrown into the fiery depths to suffer for all eternity. These fictional visions have come to be married to stories that we read in our biblical book of Revelation. Our modern culture, too, has added to these images with our own fictions, stories about the rapture, fictional writings and movies such as the Left Behind series, in which the good people are snatched up, sent to heaven, and the bad people are left here behind to suffer the coming judgments that will be here on earth when tumult and terror reign. Over these past 700 years, we have been trying to figure out just what it is that the final judgment will look like. And it's stories like these that have filled our images, our heads with images and stories that we would rather forget. For indeed, who among us is sinless? 
Jesus and John the Baptist and all the prophets before them tell us that we will stand in judgment before God. And fire and brimstone emanating from the inferno often leave us quietly praying that we just might forget all about that. But for all of these stories of terror and interpretations which give us their thoughts on the final word of who the sinners are and who it is that will be left behind to face these terrors and who are the good Christians who will be taken up away from it all, none of them reflect the true heart of the book of Revelation. Some of you may have heard that Revelation is sometimes called the Apocalypse of John. And even that word has been overtaken with an ominous and threatening tone and a depiction in our modern world that fails to meet what it truly means. For we imagine this apocalypse as a time of destruction when the earth is torn apart and signs of judgment assail the earth, much like Dante's vision. And in truth, the very idea of apocalypse, having been married to Dante's tale of Inferno, continues to give us these false images. We see fires raging on the earth, volcanoes erupting, seas churning, devastation being wreaked, wars among the nations and the peoples raging. But, that too reflects this modern fiction on the word apocalypse, turning it into a horror story, when in fact the word apocalypse simply is just a type of literature in ancient times. There are many stories of apocalypse, just not only the one we have in our Bible. There are also the apocalypses of Peter, the apocalypse of Paul. They just don't happen to be in our Bible. The original language of our New Testament is Greek. And the Greek word apocalypsis, from which we get apocalypse, simply means revealing or disclosure. This idea of apocalyptic literature is to offer us a revealing and an unveiling of truth. So, what is being revealed to us in our scripture from Revelation today? If you would take another look at that text, we don't see there terror and tumult. Instead, we see a vision of what we might think to be heaven or the heavenly realm. Perhaps even an image of the kingdom of God in its final fulfillment. And it is a place of light and security. It is a place filled with glory and all of the nations will have finally come to worship God alone. We're told that in this place there is no night. Nothing that will fill us with fear and terror is there. Nothing that will leave us uncertain and at risk of violence. Here in this place depicted, all those things have been washed away. John says, the angel showed him the river of the water of life, describing it as bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. There, the tree of life resides flourishing and abundantly nourished by the flowing waters of that river. Here in this place, there is only good. Here, light radiates from God such that everything is illumined and filled with light. When I hear these descriptions of Revelation, I want to exclaim, yes, Lord, let it be so. For in the world in which we live, where there is so much hate and hurt and devastation and loss and anger and fear and oppression and division. I'm ready to set all those things aside. I am ready for peace and light and security and promise for us all. All of this is the work 
of the Holy Spirit to bring these things to pass. This is the work of the one whom Jesus promised would come after he had left the earth and returned to this heavenly realm with the Father to await that time when this final victory would come to pass and the vision of John will come to be the time when the rea reality of heaven is that which is here on earth as well. Jesus knows that all of the hatred and devastations of this world that are caused by sin and evil are here. And there are real dangers to the people of this world. And so he tells his disciples on that night before they all were to leave for the terrors that awaited them in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. He blesses them with these amazing words. He says, my peace I give to you. This is the peace in which life thrives and abundant life is granted to all. Jesus tells them this knowing that he goes to the cross. Jesus offers them his peace, knowing that he was to be betrayed by one of his closest friends. He offers them this peace, knowing they would all flee and abandon him at his hour of greatest need. Jesus says to them that the peace which surpasses all understanding will triumph over all of the sins of this world through his own sacrifice and reconciliation. But if you are sitting there, and Joe probably is, questioning the truth of all of this. If you are thinking, but pastor, there are stories of terror and judgment in the book of Revelation, you're right. Revelation is not all peace and light. There are stories of judgment. But these stories of judgment are veiled stories about God's judgment upon the unjust, corrupt, dishonest, immoral nations, specifically Rome. Revelation speaks a word of judgment against those nations who oppress God's people. Revelation speaks a word about the transient power of earthly kingdoms, which will not stand against the power of love and hope and peace that are brought to us by God. Revelation speaks a word of condemnation and prophetic judgment against the nations who pervert God's will. Those nations who fail to heed God's call to love and serve and care for the least and the lost and the lowest of those who suffer in this world, those are for whom the book of Revelation stands as warning. God's kingdom will come here on earth as it is in heaven. And in that world, domination and oppression will fall at the feet of our God of justice and truth. That is what is revealed in the apocalypse of John. The bonds of the oppressors will be broken. Justice will prevail. For righteousness is the path that God has laid before us all. The blood of the lamb cleanses all that has been tarnished by sin. All the people and all of the worldly systems of injustice will stand before the throne. The broken body of the innocent lamb will repair the breach and will stand before God to bear the judgment so that he will reconcile all of the people, all of us to God, and we shall finally live as God has always intended for us. Through Jesus, we shall be made whole. By the blood of the Lamb, we shall be healed. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we shall indeed finally and for all time live in peace. Through the will of God for all creation, we shall hunger and thirst no more. This is what is revealed to us. This is the word of God. Amen. I invite you to stand.
invite the congregation to stand as you are able. We will sing our hymn of the day. Congregation may be seated. We are delighted to recognize and celebrate the achievement of three of Christ Lutheran Church's young adults. It is our privilege to congratulate and affirm Brianne Chubb, Caitlin Mosser, and Rebecca Still as they graduate from their respective colleges and universities. We rejoice with them and their families as they conclude one phase of their lives and move with great expectations to another. I invite the three of them to come forward. as you celebrate your achievements and prepare to begin new endeavors. We pray that you will be mindful of your grounding in faith and of your vocation to serve God in all your life's work and accomplishments. We hear a reading from Proverbs. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. 
then you will find favor and high regard in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes for the Lord, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless your servants with many achievements. We give thanks, especially for the milestones that Brianne, Caitlin, and Rebecca have attained. As they begin new phases of their lives, may they also know your love and experience your peace in all that they encounter. Bless also parents, grandparents, godparents, and mentors of these three those who have raised these children and nourished them in the Christian faith. Grant to each of these graduates the knowledge of your continuing presence. Strengthen them as they grow into new phases of their lives. Give them joy and peace in the certainty of their baptism that they have been claimed forever as your daughters. When life's challenges come their way, remind them ever and always that you have promised to be with us always to the end of the age. As life's journeys guide them to new homes and new places of study and work, remind them that they are always family here and that together you have bound us in fellowship and family so that we might never bear the burdens and struggles of this life alone. We ask all these things through the power of the Holy Spirit who Christ promised to accompany us all our days. Amen. Brianne, Caitlin, and Rebecca, go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve our God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us offer our congratulations to these three. The congregation has provided to each of them a gift of our congratulations. Caitlin, Rebecca, Brian, you may return to your seats. I invite the congregation to stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, 
We pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways. Your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to you humbly, to your humbly authority, humble authority. God in your mercy. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace. We pray for Shirley, Alan, Mary Emma, Pat, Audrey, Arlene, Sarah Jane, Charlotte, Joanne, Marianne, Darlene, John, Jack, Kathy, Millie, Bob, Norma, Lillian, and Velma. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God in your mercy. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people, especially join hands, accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with these, with those who have died, when we meet together at your river of life, God, in your mercy. Prayer. Into your mercy, O God, receive these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We will worship with our offering.
Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy. Almighty and merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. 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 Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
in the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. Amen. The congregation may be seated. For those who will commune in your pew or at home, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Bless 
God's name. I called on the Lord who answered me. From all my troubles I was set free. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Of the Lord. Worship the Lord, all you people. You'll want for nothing if you ask. Taste and see that the Lord is good. In God we need put all our trust. Taste and see, taste and see the good.
I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, may God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. We sing our sending hymn. Church are go in peace the living word dwells in you thanks be to God amen and please join us in the fellowship hall for cake and celebration if you are able <laughs> <laughs>